Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we are going to test this very beautiful ASRock Z490 Aqua board which unfortunately has been laying around in my office for like two months and I didn't have time to test it or I didn't have anything interesting to test it with because 10900K has been used in so many cases that I didn't find it interesting anymore. But now last week Intel sent this 10850K over to me to check it out. By the way, we're also giving away this CPU afterwards on Instagram. The reason I'm using Instagram is simple because I can do direct messaging, which makes it a lot easier for me to organize a giveaway. If you want to join, feel free. If not, absolutely fine to me. The 10850K is the same CPU as a 10900K, just a slightly worse bin. It just clocks 100 megahertz lower and is available at least in Germany for about 80 euro less, which I think is kind of interesting because it's still an overclockable CPU, it's a case queue, which means let's say we invest five minutes into this, then we should be able to get the CPU on the same level as a 10900K. And then if you save 80 bucks, why not? Let's check this out. This video is powered by Team Group with their new T-Force Vulkan SSDs and the Extreme ARGB DDR4 gaming memory kits. The T-Force Vulkan SATA SSDs are available from 250GB to 1TB 3D NAND capacity and offer up to 560MB per second transfer speed. The very thin chassis with only 7mm height, ECC, trim and smart turned this into a great option for your laptop or gaming PC. The T-Force Extreme ARGB memory kits with 3200, 3600 and 4GHz offer a very high transfer speed and at the same time unique design. The most recent generation of ARGB LEDs paired with an aluminium heatsink with mirror finish are compatible with RGB software of Asus, MSI, Gigabyte and ASRock. Find out more in the link below. It's the same as in the previous Aqua board. Once you open it, there is a letter which is sitting here and if you open the letter it says thank you for your purchase of the ASRock Aqua board and obviously this is a sample from ASRock. That's why we can also see the bower on this card right here. Otherwise, I guess you would find your serial number on this card. The visuals are very similar to the X570 version. Everything is made out of aluminium. Just by touching it, you can feel it because it's like very heavy and cold. Huge chunk of metal. The main difference I can spot first is that the chipset should not be water cooled on the C490 board. It makes sense. The C490 chipset is the same as C170, C270, X299, whatever. It's all the same chipset and it doesn't require much cooling. It has like 6, 7, 8 watt TDP and yeah, it makes sense that it's just a passive cooled block. I guess at least we will find out how it looks like underneath in a second once we take it apart. For the accessories we have all the necessary tools mounting the block like screws and stuff in here top left Wi-Fi antenna some SATA cables manual and CD and that is pretty amazing right here We have special fittings included in the aqua design See the aqua logo on there. That is pretty awesome. It's obviously just for one tube size, but that should be 12 millimeter from what I can judge, we'll measure it just to be sure. But that is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's always good to be safe. I just double checked and measured and it's indeed 14 millimeter and not 12 millimeter diameter for hard tubing. The backside is covered with a partially brushed aluminum backplate, should give it additional stability. I guess we can find some thermal pads here and here. We'll find that out in a second once we remove the backplate and also an additional frame here to give the CPU extra stability mounting it. Can you see those traces of the PCB inside the thermal pad? That is pretty much the perfect coverage and also perfect mounting pressure. It's a little thick, which is caused by the dimension of the back plate, but that is pretty much a perfect thermal pad placement. There is nothing pretty special on the back side of the board. The only thing I straight noticed are those ICs right on the back of the VRM, which should be doublers, but we will find that out once we remove the front cover or the front block and then take a look at the VRM in particular. One fun fact, as a side note, can you see this very tiny hole in the socket? That is often used for extreme overclockers to attach a small temperature probe like a K-probe on the back side of your CPU and measure the CPU temperature on the back, which helps to detect cracking issues from your thermal paste, for example, under extreme load when you're running like minus 150 degrees Celsius. You remember that we already spotted the seven doublers on the back side. We have 16 faces in total on the front 
We have 16 MOSFETs and inductors. The MOSFETs or power stages, they are capable of 19 amp each. That is quite overkill. And that also explains why, for example, my friend Splave, overclocker from the US, has been using this board many, many times for his extreme overclocking attempts. Also very successful. He did many world records with this board. And the power delivery on this board, as I said before, we have the seven doublers on the backside, which means that the seven phases are doubled to 14 and the rest of the phases, the other to R for power delivery of the integrated graphics and system agent. But no matter what you're trying to do to this power delivery, especially with the monoblock or for extreme overclocking, you're not going to beat it. Underneath the other covers, we can find access to three and or two slots going to populate the top one for, actually, that's four, right? Well, four with a smaller size. That is kind of interesting. Anyway, I will populate the top one with my M.2 test SSD. And here we have the chipset cooler. As I said before, it's passive, which is absolutely sufficient for C490 due to the very low power consumption of this chipset. Quick look at the monoblock. Quite nice finishing on this one. You can see it just in the reflections. Yeah, it looks very, very good. The only thing I would criticize is the fact that the thermal pads are already mounted because you can see those very deep marks of the inductors and the power stages. And especially on pads, if you mount them a second or like a third or fourth time, the pressure will not be as good as on the first attempt. It would have been better if they would be separate and the user would have to apply them himself and then you would get the perfect mounting contact on the first mount. But now we're already on the second mount, obviously. And then you already have those dents in there. And by the way, it's also cooling the network chip, which you can see here. Already applied a thermal paste on a 10850K. That is Cryonaut Extreme thermal paste, the pink one. All right, let's mount the monoblock. Okay, decided to spend the extra five minutes also disassembling quickly the monoblock while we are at it anyway. The top part, this cover is milled out of one piece out of aluminium. We have an LED strip which is sitting inside here, connected over this cable to the main board. And here we have the monoblock itself. The only structure I can see in this block is just the part where it hits the CPU, like the intake here. And then it goes to the left and to the right and then to the exit part. But there is no additional structure for like the VRM or anything else. I think considering the price of this board, they should have put maybe additional surface, like some additional holes, whatever structure in this part right here for the VRM. I just peeled off all those very annoying films that are stuck to everything on nowadays boards and are just a waste of plastic. Yeah. Can you see this bubble in the screen? It's not a foil that is stuck to the screen. It's the screen itself. How the... I don't get it. I just hope that you won't be able to see it like this once it's switched on. Still have to get all the bubbles out of the system, but so far the OLED display on the side is pretty awesome. You get all the system details like frequency, CPU voltages, temperatures should also cycle through here. And it's also the debug LED, which means that because there is no VGA present should get us yeah, VGA failure. Right, gonna do the final assembly, but so far so cool. The only thing I just, yeah, what's up with this bubble inside here? If you have any idea how I can get this bubble out, please let me know. Just judging the visuals, I guess it's one of the most beautiful C490 boards you can get. I mean, with a price of like 850 to 900 euro here in Germany, it's a very hefty price for a C490 platform. If you compare it with like TRX40 or X299, it's definitely a very hefty price for a board, but yeah, absolutely beautiful. In our 20 multi, the score was about 5,500 points with the clock always being at 4.8 gigahertz boost. Now running the single core test, one core boosts usually to like 4.9 or 5 gigahertz, which you can see on the left. The refresh rate is currently quite low, that's why you cannot see it that easily. But you can see on the right, the maximum core boost we could see was 5.2 across multiple of the cores. This is where the display comes in very handy just to check out CPU frequency, CPU voltage, right now about 1.3, 1.32 volt. Wow, 1.36, that was higher than 
I saw it before. But that gives an indication of what the CPU is currently running at and also CPU and VRM temperature. I will now manually overclock to like 1.36, 1.37 volt and then see if we can get the 5 gigahertz stable. Figured out the maximum stable clock for my CPU and that is 5 gigahertz across all cores but I need 1.38 volt. Temperature wise it's running pretty much on the limit. You can see maximum temperatures yeah, 95 degree on this particular core right here which means that 5.1 gigahertz would certainly not work. You would need much better cooling for that and much higher V core which then needs again much better cooling but I'm running Prime95 right now has been running for a bit over 30 minutes and Prime95 is pretty much the maximum load you can get gaming should be much easier to handle. All right 15 minutes in gameplay remnant from the ashes so far pretty good on the top left you can see the temperature the clock and also the voltage it's constantly always showing about 1.4, 1.42 volt in FPS mon, but that's always software reading. I'm not sure how accurate this really is. I wouldn't trust it 100% when it comes to the bare vCore reading because sometimes it's like spiking up to 1.47 volt, which seems to be a little bit high. Temperature wise though, pretty awesome. I mean, we're in the mid 40s, sometimes reaching 50, 55 degrees Celsius, but it is pretty much in the safe green zone. Clockwise, we're always at about 5 gigahertz. That is what we wanted to achieve. Okay, but I think this is pretty safe for uh, 10850K. I mean, it's the same as 8700K, 9900K essentially, and we have pretty good experience with running those CPUs at like 1.4 volt for gaming. And I think you can probably easily push your 10850K to 5 gigahertz with those settings. VRM temperature is also pretty awesome. I mean, that's just gaming and 46 degrees Celsius maximum. That is absolutely safe. By the way, after half a day, the air bubble inside the display is gone. Po was probably just from peeling off the protection film. Quite happy that this is gone because considering the price of the board, should not have those kind of issues. Nice. The 10850K is for sure a cheaper alternative to the 10900K. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that the 10850K is basically a worse 10900K when it comes to the binning. If you buy a 10850K, I would never expect that any of those CPUs would be able to run like 5.2, 5.3 gigahertz. That is surely a frequency you can only get with a better binned 10900K. Apart from that, if you're aiming for like 4.9, 5 gigahertz, those are pretty much frequencies you should safely be able to achieve on any 10850K and then it's for sure a cheaper alternative to the 10900K. Having 100 megahertz less is probably not gonna affect your gaming experience much. Especially if you're gaming in 4K, then you probably won't be able to find any kind of difference between the 10850K and the 10900K. The ASRock C490 Aqua board, pretty impressive. Virtually probably one of the most exciting and most beautiful boards on the market. Definitely worth taking a look at this, but it's very, very expensive. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye.